What's going on, everyone? It's Adam McCraig with Grand Sand Golf. This is our PGA Divas Sleepers for the 2021 Tra Travelers Championship. Whew. Craig. <laughs> It's a struggle this week. U.S. Open hangover is real. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I mean, decent sleepers at least at the U.S. Open. Yeah, I mean, okay. So we had four of six made cuts. Uh, a block there in the 30s. Stuart Singh made the cut and kind of didn't do anything with it. Uh, a shutout, though. A shutout that's kind of twofold, though, I want to do for uh, David Matusak. I, I think it's his last name is pronounced. I'm going to go with uh, Matusak. Oh, Matusek. I, I, I don't know. Let tomorrow. us know if, if we're even close, though. Long, long time follower, long time commenter, great picks. Uh, he called out Poulter, Harris English, and Sink as sleepers last video. Harris English with the with a third, so that was a great call. All three of those guys made the cut, though. But then on the Saturday night showdown for the final round, we said, you know, call the winner, winning score. A lot of people went, you know, Louis or or Hughes, or whatever, he said Rom minus six and absolutely nailed that call, which, I mean, he was further back than Rory and Bryson and all that. Yeah, for sure. Nailed, nailed the pick, nailed the, the number. Um, yeah, well done. Well done, David. Well done, David. I do want to say on our DFS uh, podcast, uh, Harris English was one of our picks in the 7K, so that's nice to see him uh, finish well, and he had a nice each way for me. But onwards to the Travelers, Greg. Yeah, let's do it. Again, it seems pretty straightforward here. Uh, I, I feel like these guys, I would say with this week, uh, maybe shop around a little bit. As we go through our, our six sleepers, I kind of notice a few are way different between DraftKings and FanDuel. Something, so something to keep note. Uh, but my first one here is Emiliano Grillo, 7,300 on DraftKings. He's 38th, but on FanDuel, he's 27th ranked, 9,600. Uh, Grillo ranks 8th strokes in total in the last eight months, or last three months, sorry, at plus 1.51. But he is first in strokes in approach. His strokes in approach for the last four tournaments are at least, I think, over plus 1.1. Like, he's absolutely striping mm -hmm. the ball right now. Uh, if you also look at his tournament breakdown, he's positive strokes in putting in four of the last six. That is huge for Grillo. I know, that's huge for Grillo. And that has translated into some pretty decent finishes. But with Grillo, week in, week out, there's not that level of consistency. So it is definitely more of a high... Any of these guys under 7,500, a little bit more high risk uh, with these plays. But Grillo especially. Uh, at TVC River Highlands, 4 for 4 made cuts. Hasn't done a lot with it. Uh, you know, just kind of middling, I think, one top 20 in those four starts. In those 14 rounds, it's about a half stroke. Uh, strokes in total average but i think really if you look at the pga tour you know season long stats he is a great slash perfect statistical fit he's second in greens and regulation at 71.53 first in par four scoring remember it's a par 70 this week so uh, I, I think grillo is a great fit if he can find fairways and if he can make a few putts i think he can be right in the mix yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I think the other thing with Grio is he, he gives you a, his ball striking gives him a serious upside. So, uh, you know, he can he can legitimately go out there and win it, uh, even if other people are playing well. You know, some guys you can think of in this range, they, they, they definitely could win it, but it kind of would have to rely on other people not playing their best. I think Grio is such a good ball striker that if his putter heats up, he, he could legitimately win it uh, with his best stuff. Yeah, I think your next pick here is a little bit safer. So if you want safer, maybe your pick. But Grio, if not, still a good showdown play. Yeah. If he's playing well. Yeah. Um, safe? Yeah, well, it's kind of weird to think of a 48-year-old. 48, 48 is that what we're going with? Yeah, <laughs> I, I think, think so. Uh, a 48-year-old is a safe play. But Stuart Sink, 7,300 on DraftKings, 38th in pricing, uh, 9,100 on FanDuel, 37th. So, so pretty consistent compared to some of the other guys here. Uh, the the Numbers are awesome recently. He's six in strokes in total over the past six, uh, sorry, over the past three months at uh, 1.6 basically. Uh, but then when you look a little bit further back two years, uh, we fall all the way down to, to 0 0.3, 0 0.4 kind of thing, uh, 52nd in this field. So really you're kind of counting on some of this recent momentum being more what, what you're going to see from Stuart Sink if you do want to play yeah. him this week. Uh, we're looking at seven straight made cuts. So that, that's a good start. Sometimes you look at the made cuts and you're like, oh, well, like, yeah, it's made cut, but he finished 40th in a field that wasn't that great. But uh, right. those include three majors. He made the cut in the Masters, PGA Championship, U.S. Open. Uh, Masters Legit. was probably his best finish. Um, but even still, just making the cut at those events is, is pretty darn good. Yeah. Gaining on approach in nine straight events, his average over those nine events is 1.13. So that does even 
going to include uh, a tournament, at least a tournament where he missed a cut, um, potentially two. I, I'd have to look back at that to be sure. Uh, mm -hmm. But then last thing, three top fives in his last nine starts at Travelers. Um, now, to, to qualify that, uh, Stuart Sink's last nine starts, we're looking all the way back to 2006. So, uh, you know, he hasn't played here every year. It's not, it's not uh, one of these tournaments that everyone plays year in, year out. So, yeah. so we are looking at it. But it just shows you that, that I mean, he has won here. He, he, I think you can expect that there's not going to be anything, any, anything about the course that is going to be uncomfortable or anything like that. It's just more a matter of does, does he have the game? Does he, is, does he execute this week, really? Um, so yeah, I, I like Stuart Sink. I think there's upside. I think he's got a lot of made cut equity. So yeah, 7,300 seems like a good deal. Yeah, I mean, I like Sink. I, I, he was a sleeper for me last week, obviously. I've been kind of using him for a few weeks now, and he seems to be kind of paying off decently, it seems like. Uh, I, I miss him on the RBC Heritage, so trying to get that third win in the season. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think the only downside really for sync is he will be a little bit popular, I think in this range, but there's a lot, there are a lot of guys here in the 75 to 7,000. There's mm -hmm. a lot of options. Yeah, for sure. I, I actually find that a lot of my strategy this week will be centered around plugging in guys from this range and then seeing what I can do up top. Just cause I, I yeah. to me, this is the, the, the peak of the value is in the low seven Ks. Completely agree. Completely agree. My second pick. Brian Snedeker, 7,200 on DraftKings, 43rd there. A little bit better on FanDuel, so 51st on Uh He is coming in, so this includes PGA Zurich Classic, uh, seven straight make cuts, four of which were top 20. So he's playing very well recently, and I think that shows up in his strokes in total. So last three months, he's 28th in the field at 0 .90. You can kind of see the dip around six months. He, he wasn't playing well for, for a while there, uh, mm -hmm. kind of the shoulder season, I guess. Uh, and it goes all the way down to 70th at, you know, kind of zero, really, just over zero. But then when you get to two years, that's when I think I, you get the most sample size with Snedeker in, instead of going kind of career long. But that kind of levels out somewhere in the middle from where he's playing, play, playing pretty decent recently, coming out of a huge slump. And the two years, I think, is kind of the average of that at 0. 0.447th rank, which I think is appropriate kind of with both DraftKings and FanDuel kind of ranks there. Uh, but he is he is trending up, and I, I'm going to keep riding Seneker trending up uh, while he is playing well. Uh, with that, he also does have a, a strong history here. So seven of nine made cuts, four top 25s. If he gets a top 25 this week, that means 50% of the time he's top 25 even you know, when he shows up to this course. Uh, with his 32 rounds here, plus 0.78 strokes game total. I think of all the players in the field on the, the POA, I think it's POA Bentgrass, kind of a mix. He has something like top five and wins on this type of surface so i think he plays his surface very well i think it's a course that suits his game uh but he's just kind of in this range not exciting when you have you know the other euros or ball strikers or that kind of thing he just kind of he's going to be a little bit slept on so that kind of makes him more interesting for me yeah i i like i like to play again it's a packed range i think even if you don't find ways to get snedeker into your week long um, I think that you definitely want to have a look at him for showdowns because he, it just seems like when he gets a hot putter, he's one of these people that can, it's sort of like a Kevin Na, where he yeah. can just fill it up over the course of a round and he posts a number where you're like, man, he didn't even hit the ball that well today, <laughs> but he just sank everything he saw. Yeah, 22 um, putts or something. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, yeah, no, I like I liked, I liked the pick. I like the value. Uh, really, the only thing that it's going to come down to is there's so much, I think, in this range. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, I've got another one here, same price, 7,300 as my first one. Ricky Fowler, 7,300, he's 38th on DraftKings, 9,800, 23rd over on FanDuel. So one of these guys, we do see a fairly big discrepancy between the two sites. Um, you look at the strokes gain total numbers, I think they, they show value uh, if you're looking at the DraftKings ranking. Uh, last three months, he's actually 0.86 strokes gain, which may be a little bit more than people are, are thinking because we are starting to see some form from Ricky. Mm -hmm. uh, he's 30th in the field over that time. And then you, you kind of you see the dip in, in six months to 12 months, yeah. but then you zoom back out to two years and, and you see him back up to 24th in the field at 0.69 strokes gain total. Uh, but the thing I really wanted to point out uh so my, my me playing ricky fowler this week is sort of i'm certain to buy that he's on the upswing mm -hmm. and so if he is on the upswing what does that mean 
That means we're talking about a guy who had 10 straight seasons of at least a full stroke gain. Yeah. And some of those years, he's over two strokes gain. So, I mean, the upside is huge uh, with Ricky. Eight straight seasons, these eight past years. These, this is not including this season, right, um, right, obviously. Right. But but eight straight seasons coming into this year where he was gaining in each strokes gain category. That's impressive. So, I mean, that is incredible. Yeah. That even, like, you know, the... I mean, we know he's a good putter, especially at his, at his kind of pinnacle. Um, but even around the green. You know, there wasn't one year where he was even just slightly losing on the season. Right. So, right. Um, to me, that that is the golfer that if Ricky is coming back into the form, that's the golfer that you're hoping to start to see. Uh, and the recent form. So, t- tied, tied 11th or better in two straight events. Uh, those are very, very good events. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're talking PGA Championship and Memorial. He obviously wasn't in the U.S. Open field, um, but uh, so you know, very, very good finish in yeah. those two events. Top twenty in three of his last five. Now also two missed cuts in three of his last five. So it has been a little bit uh, hit or miss with Ricky right, of recent. Right. And then uh, the course thirteenth his last two starts here. Uh, he has not played here in quite some time. Uh, it was 2010, 2013. And I guess I actually don't even know this off the top of my head, but you may know. Have we? Has this course always been the host? Um, we would have to look back, I guess. I'll, I'll look it up and I'll let you know in the, in the, assume it has been the host. And then if I say <laughs> anything else down in the comments, then you can know it was actually at a different course. As um, you can tell by the intro of this video, this is a one take video every single time. <laughs> we yeah. start it and we finish it, baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, and last thing with Ricky, uh, just announced that, uh, that they're expecting. So, you know, maybe there's the narrative. He's got to, he's got to, you know, bring home a little bit extra on that paycheck this season and, and he needs to get in his acting gear to do that's it. That's exactly what i was gonna say uh got the baby on the way in november can't afford to miss any more masters or anything like that um the the one thing i was looking at rookie for quite a while because i think his finishes are very good i I forget if it's three months or 30 days this is on the on the uh, data golf tool uh, on their website but a lot was carried with his putter um kind of scared me and just more generally i think his short game because his around the green play has been good as well yeah it, it kind of gave me that spooky justin rose type vibes or i mean louis usason has kept it up all season but you know what the putter can make up for a lot of things if his approach isn't that strong how long can he you know make all those putts now he is wearing prescription sunglasses right so that's a new yes maybe, maybe there's a uh maybe he actually he's the same putter he was back in you know 2015 2016 when he was the best putter in the world and he actually just can see the hole and read the breaks properly Honestly, he's my favorite putter to watch i like i do my putting based on him like the, the narrow stance and I, try to emulate yeah, it yeah it's just so good when when he's on it it looks so good yeah. And, and, you know, I, I must admit, I'm a Ricky fan, so I am buying into the Ricky is coming back into form. I mean, the thing is, if Ricky is coming back into form, this is a stupid price. Um, <laughs> like in this field for him to be yeah. 38th at 7,300, uh, you you know, this is Spieth early in his return potentially, where you're still getting him cheap, but uh, the talent that you're getting for that price is not matching it. You yeah, know? I think that's fair. Okay, my third and final sleeper here. I am going. I think my favorite sleeper. I'm going Carlos Ortiz, 7100 on DraftKings. He's 50th. Seems absurd. Uh, 9200 on FanDuel, 35th. Looking at the strokes team totals again. Looking the at the ranks there compared to his 50th pricing, it just doesn't make sense. So his past three months, he ranks 37th in the field, a plus six five. Six months he's 26. 12 months he's 26 as well. So, w- however you really want to slice it, he's way better than I think the 50th priced golfer in this field. And then you take a very kind of, again, a short micro look at this in his last 15 rounds. He's positive in 11 of his last 15. So even the three month isn't that great. I feel like it's a little, a little bit of an uptick for Carlos Ortiz. Mm -hmm. And when we get to the range of 7,100, less so than 72, 73, because I think there's a little bit of a drop off 71, seven. I think he has as much upside winning upside as anyone kind of 71 and below. Uh, looking at his uh, history at the Travelers, I think that might get people off, and I think he's a good pivot in this range. Uh, he's only made one of four cuts. He was 17th in 2016. But, again, looking at it a little bit more closely, he's been under par in six of his eight rounds here. So he's playing decently. He's just missing a cut when it's minus four and he's minus three, or minus two when it's minus four. Like he, He's very close, and he's playing decent. He's gaining strokes. He just hasn't quite had the chance to play many weekends. But when he does, he's finishing in the top 20. So I like that. And I don't think it's a poor fit. I actually think it's a pretty strong fit. He just hasn't 
translated it through. Um, but the main thing here, we're talking about the stacked range. You got Mackenzie Hughes, you got Guido, you got Kisner, you got Chez, uh, all these guys that spoiler alert are in their show that I think are going to get a ton of ownership, especially Hughes and Guido coming off great kind of us opens. I think Carlos Ortiz is the right pivot you want to make in this area. And I th- yeah, I think it just opens up a lot of things that you can do up top. Yeah. Um, so first off, uh, just on Guido, Guido is almost one of my picks here. Um, I, I think the the big problem for me is that he had such a splashy U.S. Open that I think his ownership is going to be very high. So like yeah. uh, the the value I think on Guido is good in terms of the price. It's going to be the ownership that I, I think that I just have to get away from it um, to to kind of give me leverage in the field. But as far as Ortiz goes, uh, I I totally agree. I think his upside is huge. The one thing that I had noticed when I was looking at it as a potential play in the past few weeks is that the ball striking numbers had not been good. Like that's part of the the past three month dip was that the yeah. really the strength of his game is his ball striking and that had start, we, we saw that wasn't great for a few tournaments so that is the one thing I, I would go to look at you know those 11 of the past 15 rounds where he has been gaining mm-hmm. has are we seeing the ball striking form coming back and, and ultimately um yeah if, if his ball striking is there i mean we saw him win or late in 2020 yeah. this season um but uh yeah huge upside um i, I think that uh, i think it's a good pick and at 71 but he does have a floor that can fall out for sure yeah for sure for sure um okay last one here for the week taylor gooch seven thousand he's 57th on DraftKings, <laughs> 8900 oh he's tiny too i guess i forgot to blow that picture up um that is not representative uh this is not to scale from the previous ones but uh, <laughs> uh 8900 over on FanDuel, 42nd over there uh so you look at the numbers and uh, i mean to me the last the last three months um, have not been good, but we, we have seen him uh, come into a little bit of form more recently. He's 50th in the field, uh, in, or 53rd in the field in the last three months for strokes in total. But then you look at six months, 12 months, two years, it's much better. You know, he's up into the, the low 30s, which at a price of 57th, I mean, that's just straight value to me. And last, uh, this whole season for Gooch, I think is a bit of a quiet breakout year. 23 starts. I mean, it's it's not a flashy breakout year by any means, but I, I think they are better numbers than he's had in any previous PJ Tour um, seasons. Right. Uh, 23 starts, positive in all strokes gain categories on the season, which to me is it, that's awesome. Uh, like yeah. that's that's what you want in, when you're kind of in the range that Gooch is, and you don't have any one thing that you really excel in. You know, he's not he's not yeah. off the tee gaining a stroke or something. He's Ricky Fowler. For one year he's he, maybe he's ricky fowler on the way up um but then uh, you know uh, more recently one missed cut in his last 11 events uh and then this is the full season uh, for the 23 starts we've got eight top 25s three top five so yep. you know he does not have a win on the season but he's got three times he's been you know close including at the players championship and at genesis i believe which are two strong tournaments um and eight top 25s out of 23 that j- to me that just shows that oftentimes he is uh relevant getting value for you um more recently five straight made cuts over that time he's gaining over a full stroke 1.2 strokes in total about half of that is on approach 0.56 strokes in approach so to me that is kind of the one thing that uh i I think as he continues to develop as a pga tour player you're going to see that becoming more and more his strength that he reliably gains on approach Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, i I also think he's a really good putter on top of that but i think approach is the one that as a consistent week in week out he'll have to be strong there uh, because he's not a bomber like some of these guys you know yeah um and then just just you know the last two tournaments he's been top 20 in both of them so you, you have to think he he has good form coming in yeah uh, we doesn't have any flashiness because the from the u.s open so i i don't think his ownership is where i think it should be you know i i value him higher i think than the general public going into this week so to me you say ortiz is is your best i think Bagush might be my best value on the week oh i like it i i almost lost it after that tiny picture and i almost never recovered <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i like the price honestly with the last three picks here it kind of seems like DraftKings is baiting us with these guys that are seem mispriced uh at least especially compared to FanDuel. Uh, maybe they're appropriately somewhere in the middle. I don't know, but it does seem like they're kind of hanging these guys out sometimes to to have us bait and, and grab them, you know? 
Yeah, and I think, you know, some of it is reacting to U.S. Open results, changing people's, you know, both results and ownership and, and everything. Yeah. Uh, and then these guys that weren't in the U.S. Open are just by default taking a hit. Uh, so, yeah, I agree. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. A reminder, other life things come up, and we have no live DFS show this week and no showdown shows, but please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and let us know, Craig. Next slide. Favorite sleeper under 7,500 on DraftKings. Let us know below. Get called out in the in the next show. Uh, yeah, favorite sleeper under 7,500. Yep. Take care, guys. Good luck this week. Yeah.